OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Welcome everybody, we're so excited you're here. Can you all see my screen? And it looks right? Yes. Yay, I did it, I'm so proud. All right, so what we wanna share with you today, first, my name is Debbie Jensen. I'm a subject matter expert at OTAN. I'm also CK certified instructor. We also have with us Lindsay Kincaid, who is our CK12 specialist. And um, lurking in the background, you may see her, we see Netta and Asari, our OTAN coordinator of technology projects. We're all excited to share with you part three, Flexbooks 2.0 showcase and support. And there you go. Our objectives today. Um, and because this is a presentation that's really focused on you, we want to know what you have questions, what, you're, what you want to know. Um, we've done parts one and part two. Um, they will be available as soon as they're available. So they will get there. Um, and so if there's something that you have a question or if there's something that we say today and you go, I'm not sure what that means, please ask because we will definitely want to help you with that. Um, so we're gonna have a real quick review. Um, we're gonna talk about community contributed. Um, if any of you are working currently on a um, Flexbook and you want to share it with us, we'd really love to see it. Um, we want you to do that. We have then a guest contributor, Shanna Friend, who's with us and we're excited to learn about her process. Um, we're gonna go over troubleshooting and that's one of the places where we'll be answering questions that you have. We'll go over customization again and kind of show you a couple different ways um, and um, how to add resources to your Flexbooks. We're going to then go live with Lindsay and she will demonstrate everything and anything that you're um, having questions about. Then we'll come back for a few more answers about publishing and about creating a class and reports. So that's the plan. Some years ago, Netta and Asari, our OTAN coordinator of technology projects met with Carl from CK12 at an OER conference. And they found a joint love of open educational resources. They talked many times about how CK-12 and adult education should get together. And it was through their efforts and Lindsay Kincaid, who inherited the project, that as of March, 2021, we now have a special section on CK-12 that is dedicated to adult education. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay and she's going to continue with all things wonderful. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to spend it with us. I recognize some of the names from the past couple sessions. So if you've been with us for one or two sessions and this is your third, um, that, that, that's amazing. Thanks for joining. If you are just now joining us, I think you're going to find a lot of valuable information as well. Like I said, today is kind of set up as a um, let's talk to you and um, we're going to show you an example of an educator, what she has done in the adult education space to take CK12 content and really make it her own. And then we took her content and made it our own for her OTAN and CK12. Um, so we're going to show you all of that, but then um, we would also love to see what you've been working on. So um, I think this slide is trying to tell you of, so far I've shown you a lot of what CK12 has to offer. And you see that in our search menus, a lot of it is in the areas of math and science, um, but we've taken our K through 12 content and we've made books specifically for adult education that live on the adult education page. Um, but as you guys are looking for resources and those things that you can incorporate into your own books and use with your learners, um, there is a community contributed tab. Um, CK12, we do a great job of hiding this. I keep saying we got to draw arrows or make colors or something. It's as simple as those two circles of when you do a search, by default, you're gonna be searching just CK12 content. What our team has put on, what's been donated to us, what's been vetted by us. But there is this whole other world of community contributed content. And that's where, when we were searching for adult education materials, 
that's where we found some of Shanna's books, who's going to be presenting here in just a moment. Of She has published her books, so they were able to be searched for on CK12. And by just using some keyword searches and flipping over to that community contributed tab, we were able to look at her books. And Debbie got so excited saying, this is the book. We're going to work with this one and use this as our staple um, adult education book. Um, in, in certain areas. So uh, I just point that out because that's, that's sometimes overlooked that community contributed um, tab. So if we go to the next slide, I think um, I, I would love to see the chat window the, a little more active if you guys are comfortable sharing of, of have you been working on anything these past couple of weeks? It's, it's not a test. If you haven't, don't worry. Uh, we're, we're happy to have you here. But if you've been working on something and you want to share a link to your Flexbook, um, that'd be awesome. And after Shanna presents, we could even um, let you, we can promote you to a panelist. I think I, Melinda's probably getting mad at me right now, but we can, we can, we can make it so that you can talk um, and share some of your process with us as well. So just let us know in the chat window if you have anything that you're wanting to share with the group that would be helpful. Um, also feel free to network. Hey, is anybody working on a language arts book? I'm working on this. Uh, this is a great place to get support from other people in the same space um, working on what you're working on. Uh, but to kickstart the party, our, our, our star of today um, is Shanna Friend, and I'm going to let her give an introduction about herself and her background and everything she's done in adult education. Uh, but we are so thankful that she found CK12 and has been using our resources and customizing them in a way that um, is now going to benefit all adult educators and learners everywhere. Um, and I'm excited to hear um, her talk through the process. So welcome, Shanna. Thank you, Lindsay, and hi, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Shanna Friend. I've been teaching in adult education for about 25 years. I, uh, my undergrad is in teaching English as a second language, and I have a master's in adult education from Penn State Online. Um, I teach currently at Heinlein College in Washington State, and I've been using CK12 content for about six years. And I. I should say when I'm looking up, I'm reading a script, um, looking at my notes, I'm not rolling my eyes. I had to, uh, my students told me it looked like I was rolling my eyes and I didn't want that happening. Um, so I started looking at CK12 when I was, um, got it really excited about open education resources. And what I would love for you to do is while I'm talking, if you could just drop in the chat why you're here, what got you interested, um, or maybe your supervisor said you have to be here, I don't know. But I would love to share, you know, just your name and, and what brought you here today while I share what brought me here. Um, I got really excited about open education materials. I was getting really frustrated with uh, the GED textbooks that I was using. I, I didn't like how much they cost, that my students had to buy them. We had some in the classroom, uh, but they, if they couldn't come, they couldn't study at home if they weren't in the classroom. Nice, I'm seeing some folks in the chat, online courses, online books, great, okay. Um, so yeah, I started just looking for online content and I was lost in this sea of OER Commons, unable to find what I was looking for. I wanted something, honestly, that I could just print and not break copyright laws. And then I bumped into this CK12 stuff. Um, oh, genetics and heredity. Ooh, how fun. And uh, I noticed there was a whole textbook and I thought, oh my goodness, this is it. This is the stuff I can use. And when I got into the CK12 and realized not only can I use it and print it for free, but I can change it, then I got really excited. Um, so I was a user, started using about six years ago. And then two years ago, I approached uh, my, my supervisor and floated the idea of having an online course because I was hearing back from my GED students that they were having trouble making it to class. Um, and we clearly saw that in our attendance as well. And I thought, well, if we had something online that they could do, maybe that would help. And that's when I started creating my own content. Um, and Lindsay wanted to know kind of what that looked like. And when I say create my own content, 
I am not writing my own steps here. I'm using CK12 and really, um, I call it curating. I'm curating a textbook, grabbing, thank you, Anthony, for specifying that, open education resources, curating what the content is that I need that will help my student, and then adapting it to fit my situation better. Because CK12 started as a K-12 opportunity, and as we as adult education folks know, um, you don't want childish examples for your adult learners, right? How many people are looking for a, some, a lesson on decimals and you've got all these things about candies and cookies and stuff that doesn't really relate to the adult experience and they sometimes can be a little insulting. So my process, once I decided what I was going to do, is I started um, looking at my outcomes. I started with my GED outcomes, and I'm going to share my screen right now, which means I'm stopping, yes. And if you don't mind, real quick, let me just jump in. We're getting so many great um, comments in the chat window, but if it's just sent to panelists, then we five here on the panelists are the only ones who can read it. So I'd love for you to look and see if you just send it to panelists, maybe copy and paste it in the window and make sure that you're sending it to everyone. You're sending it to all panelists and attendees so everybody can see um, what you wrote. Thank you, Lindsay. Lindsay, can you see my screen? Yes. Great. All right, because I teach GED, the first thing I did was looked at my GED indicators, and you can find that on GED.com, everything that they want the students to learn. So you'll notice my Excel, no, this is Google um, spreadsheet here. On the right, I have the GED indicators of the things the GED says that they need, and on the left, are my, um, my state outcomes. No, oh, it's on the other way. GED is on the left, state is on the right. Either way, I matched those up and made sure that my state and my GED outcomes were all going to be covered by the content in the book. Once I knew what my outcomes were, then I went and I grabbed that material from CK12. For example, in the math textbook I put together, I went and looked for CK12 material and loaded it into my textbook. So I created my own textbook. And then when you um, are looking at a different textbook, there's always an option to add content to one of your textbooks. And I just added entire textbooks. <laughs> um, and got the information I needed. So for my foundations textbook, we have the decimals, fractions, ratios, percent information um, that I thought I would need. Once I got the topics that I wanted, I set up another spreadsheet and I started assessing the material that I picked up. And I just tracked it using a spreadsheet like this, where I've got the unit on addition. I checked to make sure that the photos, because um, in Washington state, everything has to be accessible. So any photos that I use have to have labels. Any videos I use must be captioned. So uh, that's one of the first things I checked. Are the photos labeled? Are the videos captioned? Is there a quiz? Are there answer keys for the stuff? Is there a Plix and an interactive available? And I went through and I checked all of this stuff. And it was a quick, very assembly like line like thing. I went through all the material that I needed and checked for all these things kind of one at a time. And then I went back into the material I collected and I started looking at the wording. So if we go into decimals and place values, if anyone ever wants to interrupt me, please do. 
So here in this decimal place value lesson, there was a picture of kids playing with toys or something. Instead, I grabbed something with a gas station. Can you guess why I used a gas station? Well, this is where we see some place value in real life, right? We go and buy gas and it's uh, three, 350 and then 99, we got fractions in there too. Um, and the little introductory problem that CK12 has, again, it was more about child stuff. So I changed that. Um, instead of going to the candy store, now Julie's going to the gas station. And I have a little introductory uh, problem using gas. And then we get into the decimal and place values. Um, and there are some things that I've used with my students that I added. So I added this, this place value chart and I, everything I had to make sure was accessible, but they already had these beautiful grids that I loved. There's a video, I uh, some of the videos, some of the lessons I added my own video because uh, I liked the way I explained it better <laughs> um, and, and went through it. And the great thing is, I mean, I did this for me, but because it's open education and because it's housed on CK12, now no one else needs to recreate it. You can grab what I did and you can change it to fit your situation and your students. Um, for example, uh, this one, the science textbook is still in progress. I'm working on it. What I did was I grabbed for the GED, they need all the sciences. So I grabbed information from the three middle school science textbooks and I just dumped all that information into one classroom. Then I went through and I changed it to suit things for myself. Originally, it was broken into, we have life science cells. So this is the old, I haven't changed this yet. And we have all these great lessons. These lessons are pretty short and that's great for middle school students. They, you know, it would take them maybe 10 minutes plus some practice questions. But the way I'm teaching, I need to be able to track attendance hourly by what they complete. So I have combined all the little lessons into larger lessons that will take what I think is about an hour each. Also to make it more adult education or GED like, um, I've, instead of using the practice on the side, I've put questions in throughout the lesson. So originally it was read it, and then do the practice questions. But for GED, you don't have to memorize a lot of information. It's really reading something and answering when you can refer back to what you were reading. So I put questions inside the lesson instead and then added them to the quiz because the quiz allows me to track how the students are doing. Whereas they still get to take a look at some of these. And I was able to make my questions more GED style questions using the depth of knowledge type um, question processes instead of the just memorize and remember type things. I think that is the basics of my show and tell, but I would be happy to answer any questions that folks have. Um, Lindsay, you might have to steal the screen back from me because I still am not allowed to get back. Uh, sure. Well, I, I think Debbie's going to go back into a presentation here in a minute. But um, that, I, I just, <laughs> what you were doing is what we dream of, speaking as an employee for CK12. Here, I can turn on my camera. Um, like, this is what we do. We say we've got the content that gets you maybe 70% of the way there, 80% of the way there. It's not going to be perfect for everybody around the world. You know, we have worldwide users, so it's tough to always align to standards or a certain grade or a certain, you know, type of learner. Um, but 
what we do is we give you lots of great starter content and then Shannon just gave you the roadmap of the types of things you can do. So just to, just to be clear, you do not have to do anything that she just showed you. You can go to CK12, you can go to our adult page or you can go to the CK12 page, go to a community contributed search. You can find a book that you like, add it to your library and be done with it. You can share that link and you can use it absolutely as is with your students. And that's sometimes, where you start, you know, maybe this is a baby steps process for you. You just want to pilot CK12 a little bit with your learners. So you're going to find a book and just kind of start using it, see what they think of some of the lessons. Um, then if you like it, then you start thinking, okay, well, let me rearrange for a scope and sequence. And then what am I missing? What other materials can I bring in and add some of those missing lessons and some of those missing chapters? And then, you know, again, the, the part that a lot of people just never get to because you're super busy and you have a million things on your plate is that opening up a lesson and actually looking through it and thinking how could I improve this for my adult learners for my specific um, context and that's what I'm so impressed with what Shannon is doing if she's you know has a method to her madness she's you know very methodical about what she's doing and intentional and changing out images and uh, and changing out different situations and then making sure that the content that she's kind of mixing and matching from all different places has those components that she needs and it's accessible. Um, I, I just I just think that's that's amazing. But for 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 you all, that might be, hey, what you want to do over the summer. And some of you may be saying, I'm never, I'm never doing that. Just give me, just give me a free resource that I can use with my students, or maybe I'll shuffle the chapters and send it out. Wherever you fall on that spectrum is is great. And we are and we are here to support you in that journey. Um, Lindsay, yes. First, you are you guys are putting your questions in the chat. If you'll put them in the question and answer, we'll be able to get all three of us able to answer the questions. The chat keeps scrolling up so fast we don't get to answer your questions. And you've had some good questions. One of the questions is: Is the content available in Spanish? Um, actually, I'm gonna let me share the screen and. Uh, I'm going to go live to the site since there's a lot of questions about the site and we'll start with that Spanish content. Um, the books that we have specially created for the adult learners at this time, they are all English books. Um, CK12 does have some content in Spanish. Um, so if you were wanting to just search CK12 for content, um, one way to do that would be to come up to this explore menu and say, hey, I'm looking for um, books that are gonna be in Spanish. Um, you can search for certain subjects. If you know that you're looking for, um, you know, some, some basic algebra, um, you can click on here. And then again, we've got these tab opportunities for you to select, but we have a lot of Flexbooks that cover algebra. And so you could look at these and think, okay, all right. So we've got an interactive middle school math six. Um, we've got the math eight, we've got algebra concepts, we've got all these different editions, we've got algebra two with trigonometry, um, but there's filters at the top and it's going to tell you if we have any of these in Spanish. And here you go, we have some Spanish books, again we don't have this across all of our books and we have not done these specifically for the adult ed books on our page, but if you're looking to pull in Spanish content, these are Flexbook 2.0s um, in that subject ready to go. So the process I went through, again, I'm just going to go back out to the homepage with the, with the logo here. Um, lots of different ways to find things, but one way is to dive into the subject that you're looking for. And sometimes it takes you straight into a book. Like if I selected life science, for instance, it's going to take me straight into a Flexbook 2.0. Um, but see where there's a related Flexbooks over here? Again, we... <laughs> We hide everything. We need to we need to make this all you know easier for you to use. But if you look over here with this related flex books, it's going to take you to that same bookshelf type um, type place where you can search um, specifically. I think this is helpful for looking for languages and what do we have. And so here is a life science um, concepts books tag six through eight that's going to be in Spanish. Um, and our all grades again don't be. We use grades loosely anyway at CK12 just because we are this worldwide organization that people are teaching and learning at so many different places. It's really, 
it's really doing what Shanna does of like opening up saying, Hey, I like, I think the science concept gets at what I'm wanting to teach, but maybe it's too bite sized and I'm going to combine a couple of these, you know, feel free to mix and match and do all of that. Um, and then just a reminder for you all, um, coming back out to the homepage, um, if I just, yeah, scroll down, I get the same menu of options. Any of these will get you to our adult ed page, which is the shortcut is ck12.org slash adult ed. And this is just our starter books. We are hoping that by the end of May, by the end of June, by the end of July, this, this starts growing and we have other subjects, we have other offerings. Um, a lot of these were straight up basically stolen from Shanna, but stolen legally because that's the point of our, <laughs> our, our site, right? She, she published them and said, here, everybody, I'm doing this work, use it. And we said, okay, we're going to use it. And so some of her books have turned into some of our um, CK12 OTAN offerings that you see on this page. Um, so you can take any of these, and again, you can open up a book, say, oh, I, I'm looking exactly for data and statistics, and you can add it to your library, which is just where you can store stuff that you like. You can choose to customize, which is going to start rearranging it all. You can share it, which pulls up um, you know, an option if you wanted to drop the whole book link into a class. We're going to talk more about classes in a little bit. Um, but at a minimum, you can just grab this link and you can put it on, you know, emailed out to people, send it to, send it to, you know, anybody in the community who could, who could use this book. And you're welcome to customize as much as you want. Just, just one thing that you need to get straight in your head is that the minute you press customize on this book, the books are now disconnected and you are editing your own copy of the book. So if Shanna continues to make a bunch of edits, which is something we're working with right now, I think she's edited some of the books and we wanna like steal some of those edits back into ours. It doesn't automatically transfer because she's working on her own copy and we have our own copy. And if you press customize, you're gonna have your own copy. Um, so just kind of keep that workflow in, in mind of, of what it means to customize and, and, and be working on something. Um, Lindsay? Yes. Go ahead, Shanna. It was okay. because you had some questions to answer. Yes, I did. And I uh, have never done this before. So I accidentally erased it. I want to answer it before I forget. Oh, no. um, so there was a question for me um, about whether I'm using assigning it through CK12 or an LMS. And I have done both. My online math class, I have students, my adult students sign up for a CK12 account. And um, because there's just so much math material and they sign up for an account and I create it here, great, a class for each adult student. They have their own class because the way I'm teaching, they're getting personalized um, lesson plans. So I'm individually assigning through CK12 what each student's going to do, um, but you don't have to do it that way. For my language arts, social studies, science, GED class, I'm doing it through Canvas. So, um, because, especially because my textbooks aren't finished in those yet. So when I finish a lesson and I have a student to assign it to, I'm doing it through Canvas. Um, they access it in Canvas. They do not need to make an account. And then their quiz score automatically goes into Canvas. They both work nicely. It just depends on how you want to use it. Shanna, the question was asked, can they have copies of your spreadsheets? Because they are so wonderfully organized. It gives us ideas about how they might want to organize. Um, yeah, I can, I can share it. I don't know how useful it will be because I wasn't thinking about other people when I made it. And, well, it's and, no, and no pressure. Again, I don't know if this is proprietary. <laughs> this is obviously like the long slog that you've been working for where the books, of course, are public for everybody. But um, I, I'm going to protect you a little bit, Shanna, and not put you on the spot on that one yet. You can, you can think about it as we keep talking. If you have any links that you want to share and make available, you can put them in the chat window. Um, but I, again, I think, I think we might be asking too much of Shanna to steal her kind of internal process for what she's doing with the books. Um, but you can, you, you all on this webinar are welcome to argue with me in the chat window and be like, don't listen to her, send us all the stuff. Um, but, but Shanna, it's up to you. It's up to you if you want to do that. Um, we have a lot of that, a lot of that matching is like from our, our department. It's stuff that I was looking at that's really specific to my situation. But I mean, 
I can send it out. I don't have any problem. But if you want to spend a couple hours having me explain what it means, that <laughs> that's a different thing. Maybe that's the next webinar of uh, debriefing with Shanna over her spreadsheets. Um, <laughs> no, that's 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 great. I'm sorry, I forgot I was sharing my screen, so I guess I was jumping around to random tabs. But what I was trying to get open for you is that th this is a hot question, and all of you are using something different to check student progress and to make assignments. And we can do that for you at CK12. If you are already using Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, you can just use that. And the process kind of takes care of itself. And I'll put these links in the chat window, um, unless one of my colleagues has them to, to go ahead and put, I'll, I'll put them in in a minute. Um, but we created these pages. They're kind of new. They, they talk you through like how to set this up depending on your learning management system. We've got a little overview video. We've got some quick overviews that are like two minute little bite size, adding students, making assignments. So we'll, we'll talk about this a bit more in a little bit, but in general, like I, I think since this is so specific, there's lots of different pathways you can take. I just encourage you to use the resources that we have for you and do a little exploration on your own. And then if you're having any trouble, of course, reach out to us. But um, Shanna is using a process that, like my, my sister homeschools her children and she doesn't have access to Google Classroom or, uh, you know, Canvas or Schoology. And so she sets up a CK12 class, but she does it for each of the students. So Cecilia has a class, Audrey has a class, Maddox has a class, because um, that way she can differentiate and send them all different assignments. Um, these kind of classes that we have set up just in our demo account, like this winter class that has six students in it, they're all going to get the same assignments. So you only want to set up like a class with lots of students in it if they're all going to be getting the same thing. If they are going to be getting individual assignments, that's something that you can manage through Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, or do what Shanna was talking about of maybe set up um, classes by individual students, um, or even by clusters of, I see people who do like, hey, this is the red group, and this is the purple group, and they don't even necessarily know what what that cluster means they're just being grouped in with some other students for you to give out assignments what are some other i, just, I saw a lot of questions coming in a lot of questions cleared was there anything else we should clear up for everybody um debbie anything else that was that was coming into the chat and q a i mute when i type and then i have to <laughs> you can't hear me again the All right. 2021 um, problem. It's the story of our lives. You're on mute. If this, we have showed the community um, contributed button several times. It does seem to be that it gets lost pretty easy. Okay. Let me, show let me just one quickly, more time. And yeah. Let me quickly on. show that again of um, all these different ways to search, explore our flex books, explore by subject, or just start typing in something. Clearly, I've typed in the GED Mathematics Companion before, uh, but just somebody said, you know, continental drift earlier. Uh, was what they were what somebody agreed that that's what they were working on right now um by default when i search for something up here in the search bar it lands me on the ck12 content tab and so there's 580 results for continental drift and this is going to be all over the map all these different things and so i i find these categories helpful if you know that you're looking for the book that includes it if you know that you're looking hey i just want a, a video that talks about um, continental drift you can start filtering based on what you need. And all of this is assignable individually, or these are things that you can pull into a lesson if you want. Okay, so that's just CK12 content. And then the, the place that we neglect to tell you to look is to go over to this community contributed content. And it's a little more open season. You can see that these are created by individual users and not, um, not CK12. Some of this is gonna be uh, pretty much an exact copy of what we do. Maybe they barely customized it, um, but sometimes you're going to find really helpful, interesting things here. And it tells you um, what's in. So here's a, I think this is Vir Virginia Beach. We've been working a lot with them lately. This is an Earth Science Flexbook 2021. That looks fairly updated. So I can click on that book. Here is um, their version of this continental drift. But if I want to check out their book that they last modified on August 3rd, I come back out here to the book. Uh, Virginia Beach. Um, I can see who the author was. And, you know, again, you can, 
you can do that front loaded work of going through and seeing if this is the book that you want to use. Maybe this gets you closer than one that we have on our adult ed page. It's whatever gets you the closest for your starting point where you have to do the least amount of like adding and adjusting, um, you know, to, to, to make it easy on you. So that's, that was my point to the uh, community contributed tab is just, you never know what you're going to find. And if you're looking for things that are not, as tied to math and science, you really have to go to that community contributed tab to find it because CK 12 we just don't have that many resources so I, you know, I use this one if, if you're looking for language arts we don't have that perfect book yet. Um, if any of you want to volunteer to make it for adult ed that language arts book go ahead and volunteer in that chat window we'd love to work with you on that, um, you know, hopefully that's going to happen, but when I just search for language arts, you know here's what CK 12 has. But if I go over to community contributed, all of a sudden I can see that there's somebody out there in the world who's made a third grade language arts book, um, a sixth grade language arts book writing. And so I would open this up and I would see if there's anything useful in here. And then what Shanna was saying earlier is that all of this content, when you find something you like, you can add it to a Flexbook textbook. So if I've already got a book in the works, um, I'm, I'm working on my uh, Glenbrook chemistry for high school book. Um, I can select that and say, okay, and it's going to take everything that I see on this page and it's going to put it into that book and I can then go through and rearrange and sort. So you can do that at a, um, at a book level. You can also do that at a lesson level. If you're looking at some of our resources and you're like, oh, cool. I like, um, I like this lesson on cell theory. I don't have it in my book right away. Your toolbar up here has these same options. It's just presenting them a little differently. So there's the add to Flexbook 2.0, where if I select that, it gives me those same options where I can say, add this lesson to um, this book, say, okay. And it's gonna put that lesson at the bottom of the book. Um, so as you're exploring, those are your options of like, hey, I like this. You can simply add it to your library, meaning that it's like bookmarked and you can access it later. You can add it to a Flexbook 2.0 you can dive in and you can start customizing and changing that image because you gross. I don't like that figure. Let me do something else. You know, you can, you can, you can do all of that through the customize button. Um, and then you're ready to talk about some of the sharing and things like that, that we're going to do um, here in a little bit. So um, let's, let's, let's stop and see if there are more. Oh, we had a, do we have, was that a volunteer for language arts? Of, um, <laughs> I wouldn't yes, mind. I know. This right, well, we're, exciting. believe me, we're writing down your name right now. We will be following up. Um, no, all, all the subjects. If you guys can see what we've got going on so far with um, adult ed. And again, a lot of this is thanks to Shanna revamping our content. Um, so if I, uh, well, actually I'll go just go down here, go to the adult ed page. Um, this is where we're starting. Um, Debbie's gonna tell you here in a minute, she's got some things in the works that are gonna add to this page, but um, we just need to know that it's, like happening and then your book can be the next thing to be you know featured on here in a prominent spot and get it out into the world for for everybody and it doesn't have to be perfect i think that's part of the message here too of we know that these books aren't perfect um and they don't they don't have to be because they're doing no harm we figure that putting them out there in the world and telling you guys about them is better than you resorting to your 15 year old resources that never worked anyway. Like it's, it's a starter content and they're gonna continue to improve as the weeks, months and years go on. Hopefully this is a super robust site, CTE, ELL if we're dreaming. Like, I mean, we're, we're hoping to make that all open quality resources specifically built for adults. It's just gonna, this is where we're starting and we're, we're taking any of you on the journey with us that we can. Lindsay? There's a question in the chat about uh, content being available in Spanish. And I know for the GED Spanish teachers, there is very little quality content and their textbooks are more expensive than the ones for the English GED. You wanna speak to that a little? Well, I, I, I showed, I don't know if I answered the question earlier when I showed um, the way to search for the Spanish books. Um, again, you can come up here by subject. And if you're looking for, um, you know, measurement, for instance, you've got these tabs, or if you come over to the Flexbook textbook, it's going to show you what languages we have available for this content. So if you search for Spanish, you could open up these books. And this is our Flexbook 1.0. That's why it looks a little different than our Flexbook 2.0. Um, but again, you can look at this lesson and say, oh, I love, I love this. I want to add it to my Flexbook and you can start adding to your Flexbook. And I can take this 
1.0 lesson that looks a little different and I can put it in my 2.0 book and it converts it over. Um, so there's, there's not a great trick to Spanish content other than searching that way, probably by subject and switching the language. Um, a reminder that we do offer, of course, the availability to um, change any of our, uh, let's jump into something here. You can use the Google option at the bottom to change any of the languages. That's gonna work with the menu options. That's gonna work with um, our content. It will not convert for our simulations or our adaptive practice. Um, but this is something that sometimes people do. They kind of do the, the cheat of, all right, um, I'm gonna copy and paste this and I'm gonna add it into, um, I'm gonna create a new lesson and add this into my book. It's gonna be Google Translate, so it's not gonna be perfect. Um, but that's a way to do this. Otherwise, this Google Translate, um, there's, it's, it's specific to that user, um, just because I have mine in Russian, yours won't be in Russian. So the only way to really capture that would be to do some sort of copy and paste and creating a new lesson, um, if you wanted to do that with the Spanish. Lindsay, we have a question. Shanna Friend did a wonderful job making sure all the content is accessible, but if we choose a Flexbook by somebody else, how can we check if the content is accessible? Great question. Um, we just just some basics of, of what you can and can't do. Um, we updated our license recently. We were using a um, a Creative Commons license, and now it's an actual CK12 uh, curriculum license. And you can read all of this. I'll, I'll shortcut it for you that you can use our stuff. You can remix it. You can use it for any of your purposes. Just don't sell it. Um, is 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 the basic to it. Um, you know of of we. There are a lot of entities out there that are trying to just take one of our books, slap a different cover on it, and then charge for it. And that we would come after that situation. Um, but otherwise, you, it's out there for you to use. That's, that's, that's the point. And things that you can put in the book, um, we, we've got the attribution guidelines for you, and you can click on those. Or when you go to upload an image, it's going to talk to you about what these different options mean. Um, and it's, it's also pretty straightforward of, I think you guys as educators know by now, which images you for sure stay away from that you have no rights to use. And then you've got ideas of sites that are going to help you with that. Um, ways to see if a book you're working on is, um, compatible of down here at the bottom and Shannon, I'll let you weigh on, on this in a second with, with your process, but on any of our books, there's this view image attributions. And so you're going to see if we have correctly um, given attributions to the images, which at CK12, we, we should. We should have all our images um, correctly attributed. If you're taking that third grade language arts book from that community contributed area, we have not gone through that page by page. So there may be images that don't have attributions that you would want to go back through and add. So that's one way to tell it on the, on the attribution guide. Um, and you can also uh, come here, look at image attribution. You've got some details about the page here as well um, over in these detail tabs. Um, Shanna, what, what do you do when you're trying to figure out if, if it's all compliant? Um, so first of all, I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So you're oh. talking about how it's open. The question was about accessibility, and I'm not sure if by accessibility, Andrea, if you meant that we can get it and use it, or if you meant it has, um, everything has, like the videos all are captioned and the pictures all have, um, nope, I've lost the word. Attributions. Why? Well, not I, I not attributions. On... Alternate oh, text. Text. Alt text. Thank text. you, alternate text. Right, okay, so Andrea was looking at the, yeah, and so I don't think, Lindsay, when I talked to you about making sure everything was captioned, that's not something CK12 has been looking at up to now, is that correct? And so you really, the user is gonna have to check um, yourself for the accessibility stuff. We, we pull all of our videos, again, we don't host any of them. So they're being sourced from YouTube or Vimeo. And you have some controls when you're doing embedding of those videos, whether they have you know some, some transcripts, closed captioning or other sources. I know Shanna Home made some videos and she made sure that they had um, the, the accessibility pieces there. Um, yeah, we're, we're hands off with, with videos because it's, it's going through a third party and you're just embedding it on our site. 
Um, regarding the images, um, I opened this up. If, if you are editing a lesson and you want to know if this is, um, if this is ready to go, you can open this up and see, okay, well, this is the image file and come over here to image options. And here's where you could add in your title, your alt text, change the width. You have a lot of controls. Um, so Shanna, is this what you're doing when you're looking at the lesson? Are you, are you, are you opening up and editing um, this window? Right, checking it all for the alt text to make sure that it's there. Um, and I did that for all the math. I don't think I've done that for my science book yet. Okay, so that's something that, again, is, is kind of on our list of how we continue to improve the adult education offerings that are on our adult education page. Um, I would love to get there. I would love to, um, to make sure that, yes, everything is, is compliant, because I hear that a lot, especially from the uh, adult education space, which, which is interesting. Um, Lindsay, we have another question. Okay. I customized a couple of adaptive practices, but they turned into quizzes. Is there a way to customize an adaptive practice and keep it as that without making it turn into a quiz? There's not, and that's basically the number one request. We just had an office meeting about this yesterday because that's what everybody wants to do. Say, hey, I like these adaptive practice questions, but there's three or four that I didn't cover with my learner. I want to toss them out and still have it be adaptive. Can I do that? And right now you can't. The minute you press, customize on one of your quizzes, it, it's going to make it in, or customize on your adaptive practice, it's gonna make it a quiz. And let me just open this up so we're all looking at the same thing. Like in a lesson, when you're looking at one of our flex books here, they all have this adaptive practice attached to the bottom and you can um, customize the adaptive practice. So if you want to take a subset of those questions, if you want, it, it gives you more control and it takes away that, adaptability so it's not going to serve up you know easier questions for kids who are struggling and harder questions everybody's going to get the same questions and so when you press customize it takes you to our quiz editor uh, which also we're trying to get rid of the word quiz because i think there's a stigma with quiz people want like a review or a summary or an extra practice or a study guide you know like i i think those of you who don't want this to be a high stakes thing the word quiz can be triggering but for right now it's called a quiz and that's where you give it a title you can choose the number of attempts and then we have 161 questions that are in our adaptive practice system just on the definition of a ratio. And so you can open up these questions. You can come in here and you can edit and you can hand select which questions you wanna to give to your students. But it is correct that right now you lose that adaptability and it is just a quiz. Um, which will be a static experience where everybody goes from the first question to the last question and they're, they're being served up the same questions, if that makes sense. Okay, I think we've covered the questions so far. Let's move ahead. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. So I think we're going to do some reviews again of customization, and then we'll and and Debbie's going to talk to you about some of the exciting things she's working on, um, and then we'll stop again for more troubleshooting, um, more things that I can show you live, and specifically talk about tracking student progress um, and making sure you guys know what to do with your book once it's built, how to publish and share it, and all that. All right, um, so as we look at this, um, there's so much you can do from a little bit to a lot. You can just get a flex book, change its name. You can search its content, create your own book. You can combine books. You can add more. You can share resources with your students. So this is what I've learned. And I started with very small, changes made in the books. The first thing I wanted was a math book for my ABE students. And as I was searching for it and searching for content at CK12, um, I did it the ways that we've been showing it, looking at subjects, also using the um, search box. Um, but one thing I want to tell you about is if you search and you are just not finding anything that matches up with you want, what, with what you want, go to Google and write in the topic a colon in CK12. And it opens up many more choices because they, they have a good search engine, I think. Okay, so the first one I did was a math book. Once you pick it, once you give it the name you want, um, wanted it to look like an adult education name. So I did that. You could also say Mrs. Jensen's math class. So you can, you can give it the name you want. Then you can go into the choose button, which is the green one in the center, and you can customize going down with the customize button and change the, you can rearrange, you can delete, you can um, 
add things. Um, that's, that was the very beginning of what I did. Now, as I did all my searching, this screen I always like to show you guys because it saved me a lot of time because I would always go back to the CK12 uh, icon, always, and that's and I'd start over for my searches. But I could have used, by clicking on my name, the profile up at the top right, I could have gotten to my classes, my library, and my settings right there. And so that was, that was fast and a nice shortcut. So please remember that. Okay. That was my first book, my math book. That's all I did, change the title, Ta da I'm done. I did do a little bit of rearranging because I teach math differently than it was presented. And if I remember right, I think I took out the statistics because this was ABE. Um, the second one that I did was creating a flex book from scratch. This was when I was trying to create the cosmetology book. So in my library, there's a button on the left that says create new. If I click on create new, new, I get the screen on the right. And that's where I can write my textbook title. So I wrote cosmetology right there. And once I've got that, I can just save it. And that gets me launched with the place that I'm going to start gathering from CK12. And because it was cosmetology and I searched for the word cosmetology, it was nowhere. Um, so I had to think it through and I had to think, well, what would be in cosmetology? And so I thought, well, okay, skin and nails. And so that's where I started to actually get things. I got, so I changed my search terms. I gathered and saved all of it to my library. I found that there were three sets. There was things at sixth grade level, middle school, and there were things for high school level. And then there were things at the college level in their biology textbook. Now, because I don't teach cosmetology, I included them all. And then I took it to a cosmetology teacher and I said, hey, look at this. Is, is this the, the depth of content you need for your students to get their certification for cosmetology? And we have a teacher that's working on that right now because she's really excited with what we have here. So that was the second way that I worked it through. The third way that I did was I went back to my roots of ABE. There's nothing in reading for ABE. And in ABE, it's not like it has to be a specific topic. They just need to learn how to move their reading level up. So what I did was I went to the science section of the subjects and I went to grades K through five because I knew that that reading level would be helpful. Then I went, created the new book, like we've talked before over on your left where it says create new. And I created one that I called ABE Basic Science. Okay. And I took every single lesson that was at fourth grade and fifth grade in the science courses, which you can imagine was quite a few. Um, and then because these were all written with the flex books one, not the flex books two, they didn't have the interactives. They didn't have the videos. I wanted those. And so I went to an ABE teacher with this big long list of wonderful, wonderful lessons in science. And I said, pick 10. And she did. And what she plans on doing with this is using this as her critical reading. And so then what I was doing is I was going back to CK12 and finding videos and um, interactives to add to it. So. I went back and here on the right screen, you see the edit button. The way you find that is the three dots. So if the, you're in lesson 2.2, the theory of plate tectonics, you go over to the three dots and then that opens up this uh, drop down menu. And now I can edit it. Then I needed to find the, the videos. And so I looked up earthquakes. On the left, you see the search box, earthquakes. And on the right, you see under CK12 content up here at the top, there's quite a few lessons. And so I went into them. I checked them out. I wanted to see what videos I wanted to add. And I found one that was very, very good on elastic rebound demonstration. So I found the video. I right clicked on the video inside the lesson. And up comes this menu here on the right, where it allows you to copy the video URL or copy the embed code. And I wanted the embed code. So I got that, that's in my um, clipboard. So I went back to my lesson, 
when I click on the lesson and I click in edit, so I go inside the lesson itself, I click on edit on the toolbar, which is this, uh, looks like a waffle up here, and I clicked on edit. And then what you see on the right is the wonderful 2.0, the Flexbook 2.0. This is the platform that allows you to do the magic. You add in your videos, you add in the images and all of the things you wanna be able to do. So once I'm here, I scroll down into it and then I find where I wanna put the video. Now, for those of you who are worried about helping your students with their reading. Remember, this is at a fourth and fifth grade reading level, but there's a lot of really big words, but at the beginning of the lessons, they include them so that you can go over them with your students. So they're, they're well-written, it's wonderful. Okay, so I'm here. I know where I want, I've got my cursor where I want to put the video. I come up here to the edit, insert edit media icon, it's circled on the left, and then I, click over here, up comes the embed objects um, uh, dialog box, and I then put in the embed code and then click on insert at the bottom. Now, the video is inserted, but you're not going to know it because it's going to look like the little picture here on the left, where it's kind of yellow and weird. Because you're in draft, you haven't finished to actually have the video completed and inserted so that your students are going to be able to use it, you finish. Um, so you move from the draft to the finished, and then what you see on the right is the video inserted, and it works, and it's wonderful. So what we've shown you is what's happening right now. Um, now, this is just in my neck of the woods. I'm hoping that this is happening in everybody's neck of the woods. But So we're planning on bringing out an ABE Science Basics book that's pending, and we hope to get that. Um, have a teacher working on cosmetology. Um, another, and this was done through Community Contributed, and it's not that they wrote this, this is CK-12. What they did was they took the biology information, they took what was going to be most appropriate for the anatomy and psychology, physiology, sorry, I'm sorry, and put it together and, and named the text anatomy and physiology. This one, I had a, one of our medical teachers in a school, an adult school district down here take a look at it. She went through it section by section. She went through it lesson by lesson, and she said, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. They've brought up that. That's something I always bring up. So this is great. And so this is one that we're going to be adding soon, too. So we've got lots of chores that we're going to give CK-12. All right. We love it. We call it collaboration. <laughs> collaboration. It takes, we've got the smart platform, but we need the smart educators to, you know, to, to, to take your content that maybe is on Google Drive or sourced all across the web. And, you know, we're able to pull it together like a book and offer you analytics on how students are doing and that kind of progress. Um, do you want to answer? There's no questions that I'm seeing in the um, question and answer right now. Do you want yeah. to go on with publishing and that, and then we'll come back to more questions? I, I think so. So, you know, I'm hoping by now you've seen it several times. The last session was all about customization. We showed you some live, Shanna showed you, and then Debbie's talked to you about her process. If you still have questions related to customization, put them in the Q and A, put them in the chat, and um, I'll, I'll be happy to share my screen um, here in a couple minutes. And and show you anything you want related to customization. But I think the next important topic is, um, so you've, you've, you've made a book, uh, now, now what? What do, you, what do you do with it? And um, uh, a question I get a lot is, hey, when I start making a book, can everybody in the world see like that I'm making this book in draft mode? And the short answer is no. Um, you can build a book in your account over time and there will be a button that asks you if you wanna publish it. And when you publish it, that doesn't mean that you're like finalized and done and never gonna visit it again. It just means that at that point, it is searchable um, for other teachers. Um, other options again are, 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 are sharing, are assigning, are getting insights. So uh, Debbie, I'll let you just talk through kind of this process. And then again, I'll, I'll go live for whatever anybody requests to see on our okay. site. 
All right, so again, this was how easy it is to publish. We just go back to the textbook on CTE Health Science. And when you click on the green button, instead of going down to edit or share with your class, you just click on publish. And then that makes it accessible for other teachers when they search, that this will be search, it will be in the search for them so that they can use it as a starting place. Um, one of the things though that you did ask earlier was on some of the materials in the community contributed, all they've done is what I've done. I have used CK12 material. And you can look over here on the authors here on the right, where it says authors, CK12. So there can be other authors there of things that you add and stuff, but it looks like CK12 is the primary on that one. All right, so let's take a look at assessment information in different places. Now, where I am right now is I'm in a lesson. And if I click over on the um, insights, which is the little lightning that's over on the right top, um, I'm going to show you at the demo class. They added this recently, and I'm so grateful because I never got to see what this would all look like because I don't have a class. So they created a demo class to show you what the insight page would look like. So we're inside a lesson, and this is what you would get here. We see the different students, how many of them are doing well, mastery, they're proficient, these guys are developing, and we've got still some down here at beginning level. We have down here at the bottom, haven't turned in yet, PW and JJ. Over here, I can click on the individual student and see how they're doing. Now, uh, this is assessed, okay, that's the kind of assessment information that is available. And here is, as showing you exactly what I had said before. This is inside the, the lesson on metals. And so I can see that this person has taken five minutes, 24 seconds. They're at the exploring level. And this is how well they're doing. And these are recommendations that CK12 gives to you, the teacher, so that these students should revisit these paragraphs. So it, it gets very um, explicit. It gives you very specific suggestions for how to help people. And for those that are doing very well, if you click right here where it says related modalities, it gives them more information that will be available to them to spur them on so that because they're doing really well. Now, once you get that and you've got your textbook, you've got your flex book, you're happy. Now the question is, how can you use CK12 to help with the auto grading? Um, and that's a huge amount. Um, and so they have different ways. One is to assign the class using your own LMS. And they have uh, Google Classroom, Canvas, and Schoology that are being currently used. If you use those platforms, um, it will go directly into the, your gradebook there. Okay. Um, or if you don't have any of those, then you can set up a class with CK12. And this is on CK12, and these links are there. They're also in the adult ed pages so that you can see, and they will give you much more information about how to do this. The Google Classroom is the one that I used, and I did it on my own because I was the teacher using Google Classroom. My school wasn't using Google Classroom. My district was, but they really weren't paying any attention to me. I'm an adult ed, right? Um, Canvas and Schoology, those are the ones that you will be using uh, through your district uh, that they have made an agreement with it. And so I can't speak to that one because I haven't used that one. But so it's a little bit different than Google Classroom. All right. Now, the second option, if you're not going to use an LMS, is to set up a class at CK12. Um, and they are going, to, this is an example. This is just a practice class I gave it that name. And in it, I've got assignments here for introducing ratios. I have an assignment for percents, fractions. And then um, I have a, a question to, to post to the students to gather information about what they're feeling about uh, what gives you trouble in math. Um, you can see that they're going to give me, um, they're gonna gather information on the assignments and who's doing what and how they're doing. They're going to give me information about the reports. And so these are the things that um, CK12 is gonna help me with. Um, here you see, when I clicked on assignments, this is what you see. 
the creation date, start date, due date, all of those things are set up. And then I would have the student's information here. If I clicked on reports, then I get this thing here that they call a heat map, which it shows, okay, the ones in red, those are the ones I need to pay attention to. They're really in trouble. The ones in green, they're doing okay. And so I can visually see what I'm going to need help, I, what, I, what students need help and what, how I can focus my instruction. I wanted to be sure that you are reminded again, and this is um, at the end of the adult ed page, but you can just go to YouTube. <laughs> YouTube has created, I, I mean, CK12 has created a lot of short videos on topics. The problem with going over this, even though we've been together three times, is that there's so much. In many, many respects, CK12 has been very intuitive for me on my journey. But Lindsay can tell you, I have contacted. And when you go to the contact person, it's Lindsay, which is so cool, because then I get to talk to her. And she's walked me through things. These videos are here too, and they walk you through individual steps. You can also become CK um, certified. Um, and basically, that is just you creating a class and doing step by step the various things with them showing you how to do it. And so that that's there for you as well. Um, I want to, I'll show you the next slide because I think it's gorgeous. Um, but then we're going to go live and we're going to go back and be showing you some of the things we've talked about. But the thing that got me really committed to CK12 is that this is where our students are. They're on their devices. This is where their education has to be. Our adult students are so, um, there's so much in need of getting their education so that they can move forward in their life. And they need our help. And CK12 gives them quality help. And it makes it so that you're going to be successful in finding ways to help your students. So I hope that you will join us and help make our site even bigger so that we can do more together. So now I'm gonna, I'll leave, I'm gonna let Lindsay share and she's going to um, Ab go absolutely. live. Absolutely. And let me show um, some general things first. Um, I know that some of you are, let me try to share again. Um, I know that some of you are probably to the point where you're needing to drop off and we have a question it says i missed the step of turning earlier material into a flexbook 2.0 yes let me that again let me let me table that for just one second um charlotte i will get i will get to that question let me show a few just general things and then i'll then i'll drill down into specific demos for anything anybody wants to see but for those of you who are maybe um you know anxious to to, to get off this webinar um, want to make sure you leave with with a few next steps before you before you drop off um, Remember this explore menu, uh, Debbie was just talking about our CK12 certified educator program it is a free program. It is self-paced, it is online, and it walks you through different lessons related to everything on CK12. So it's going to take you on that journey if you want to customize a book, want to know more about our Plix or our Sims. Um, it's, it's super easy to join. You just press this button, you join, you'll be put into a class and you can um, work on the material whenever you would like. If you finish, we send you a certificate documenting your hours, you get a badge, you get to claim your cool title of CK12 certified educator. Um, if you never end up finishing, we don't bug you about it. Hopefully you got some information that you needed and um, you use those resources as part of your, um, you know, what you're using to make your, your books for your learners. Um, so that's the certified educator program. Um, this help and support that we have all over the site. Um, this is where you go if you're thinking, all right, let's see, I'm, I'm a teacher. Uh, you know, she showed us, I guess any of these, these are things I'm searching for. She showed us uh, a little bit about insights, but I want to know more. What does the help center have on insights? And you are able to come here, how to view insights, how to find insights for using an LMS, how to find reports. You know, if you want to say, how do I build a quiz? How do I create classes? These are the articles in the help center to do that. Or we do have this quick overview playlist on YouTube. I don't know why it's showing up fuzzy at the moment, but 
these are more like two minutes show you how to do it um, skill sets that that could be helpful as well. Um, I am your point person. Um, Debbie is your point person. Um, so I am going to, and I'm not, I'm not ending again. I, I see that there's questions and we're going to get to it. Um, I, I just want to make sure I'm going to put my email address, lindsay at ck12.org. It's kind of the easiest thing to get to me. We are, we are a team of um, about 35 people here in the U.S. since uh, we have an office abroad in India. Um, and depending on what you're wanting to talk about, if you need to talk to our math content expert, I'll get them on the line for you. You need to talk to our science content expert, you know, great. If you just wanting to talk general, general platform things and how to get going or you know, best practices for making this a movement uh, with lots of people in your area. Um, just reach out to me and let me know what you're working on. And I'll be happy to do anything I can to connect you to other people or to assist you as you're building those books. We can always jump on a, a call, a demo, um, and and I can I can show you any of this again. These videos will be available. Like like Netta said, they're gonna or Debbie said they're gonna be on the OTAN website. Um, it's just they're just being processed, so it's just gonna be a little bit until they're until they're ready to go. Um, one additional thing, um, we are trying to talk to some educators specifically about their experiences with CK12, and I have a short link to the survey. Um, but Netta sent this out to a lot of her California contacts earlier in the week. And um, this is, we're, we're trying to find out, you know, who is maybe using CK-12 or who is interested in using CK-12. So we have this, you know, are you currently using us? Are you interested? Uh, this would be great for you to fill out and just kind of get on our radar um, a little bit that, hey, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're part of this, the CK-12 team. Um, this last button is, is more about, we are going to be uh, trying to shoot a few promotional um, things about the need for open resources for adult ed and how CK-12 can be a solution for that. And so if you're, you know, somebody who's available to be part of that effort, um, that's what you're um, kind of clicking there in the box there. Um, Netta, are you still on? Did I, did I do that okay? Is there anything else that we should say about that survey? Oh, no, I am still on and that was great. Yes, please fill out that survey. The bit.ly is in the chat. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Okay, um, I think those are my those are my tips. I'm gonna go back to answering questions now. So uh, as long as you're still interested in seeing the demos stay, stay on, we'll do, we'll do another 15 minutes of questions. I'm gonna start with Charlotte here who was asking about um, turning earlier material into a 2.0. And so this is going to happen, particularly when you search for something and you find community contributed material. Again, we started our, our resource library in 2007. And so many of the things you're going to pull up are that look like this. And this is a Flexbook 1.0. And the difference is, is just not all integrated, where the lessons that we have in the 2.0, uh, they have the sims and the plicks embedded. It has that adaptive practice on the bottom. Um, you're not going to get that with a 1.0. Um, you also can't get any insights with the 1.0. So when you're looking for progress on students and how much time they spent on a lesson, you're not going to get that with this. But hey, you really like the sixth grade language arts book? Awesome. A couple things you can do here. Um, you can take this whole book, which I think Shanna said was part of her process, if she'll just dump a whole book into a book and then edit accordingly. But you can add to a Flexbook textbook. And if you're just getting started, you don't have any options. You say, I'm going to create my uh, Flexbook 2.0. I'm gonna make this my ABE language arts book 2.0. I say, okay. And it just added this book, the sixth grade language arts community contributed book to that book I created in my library. And so when I go to the library, here is this book that I started. And if I open it up, you'll see it's now in that 2.0 format. So I selected 2.0. The authors have carried over. Um, we've got a random lesson hanging out here, but all of these are chapters. I can get more details. And then here's where I would come in and I would say, all right, well, I'm going to edit this and let me um, get rid of some stuff. We're not going to talk about punctuation. We're not going to talk about, you know, this is where you do all of the, the rearranging. So Charlotte, I hope that answered your question of just, just you can always start a 2.0 book from scratch. 
Um, if I go back out to CK12, it's not going to like me because I didn't save that. Um, but you can always start a book from scratch in your library. This is where you also get the controls to create something new. So you can create a new Flexbook 2.0. You can create a new quiz, for instance. But if you just want to start your own book, you can have lots of books going on at any time that you want. Um, you give it a title and then you can start adding in content. Um, I think it's easiest to find the content that you like and press that add 2.0 button. You can search um, our content, but sometimes it's going to pull up uh, what Debbie was alluding to earlier of a, a concept may be in five of our books at different levels. And so you might have trouble figuring out which one to work, which one works best. But if you're already on, um, if you're already on that lesson that you really like, um, then you can just add it straight into the Flexbook. We have a question. How do you change or add a graphic for the cover of the book? Um, <laughs> oh, Debbie, you're going to give me this one. So it should be easy. Um, I, let's, see if, let's see if it's working. So what you're going to do eventually is you're going to click on the book right here and it's going to say change the cover. That's what we did for the adult ed book covers. There is a bug right now that's been reported that our team has not gotten around to fixing yet that is preventing you from seeing any box that is letting you change the cover. So Debbie, this was a you email me the other day, right? I'm like, how do I change the cover? Uh, there should be, there will be in hopefully moments, days of um, the option to change your cover. It's, it's really intuitive when it's there. It's just missing at the moment because of something buggy um, on the site. Can we embed just the quizzes into the LMS Canvas? Absolutely. So um, things you can do, uh, go back to your library. And I'm just not saving anything, so it's getting angry at me. Um, uh, go to quiz. And you can build a quiz. Again, I'm going to give it a title, uh, practice, uh, whatever. And I can choose a question set where if I know that I'm looking for something specific, I'm looking for arithmetic. I can come in here and I can say, all right, we were talking about decimals earlier. Let me, let me grab 21 questions from CK12 on the overview of decimals. And I can select that. So it's just given me 20 out of 21 questions there. By default, I can press the edit button and I can actually see what all of these questions are. I can see how it's tagged with difficulty level and I can deselect ones that I don't want. So if I just want it to be a 17 question quiz, when I save this and come back out, it's just gonna say that I've got 17 questions. I can add more questions if I wanted to pull, not just from that overview, but I wanted to, let's see, where was I? I was on decimals. I wanted to do round decimals. We've got 39 questions on round decimal numbers. It defaulted to picking 20, but I can go in and I can hand select how many of those that I want as well. So if I kept these 20 right now, I'm going to have a 37 question quiz, which I don't know that that's best practices. I'm not advocating for that. Again, you can control all these things, but when you want to um, save your quiz, it's going to go into your library. So quiz updated successfully. So in my library, there should now be a quiz called practice and with today's date on it. And if you just want to use that, you don't want the lesson, you don't want all the other stuff that's coming in a Flexbook 2.0, you have options to open this practice up or this quiz up, and it's going to let you assign this to your class. So by pressing this button, you get those same options we've been talking about of give it to a CK12 class, a Google Classroom, um, or within Canvas or Schoology. But it absolutely, it will give you a true score auto graded of how many questions that they get correct out of whatever you've set it out of. So this would be out of 37. But you assigning it, I think, so we're clear on the language, you're asking about embedding. I think uh, that's a little bit of a, embedding means something a little bit different. I think what you would do is you would build the quiz and you would assign it to your class. Um, or if you're using it through Canvas, you would go into Canvas go into the CK12 module, go into your library, and you would assign it from within Canvas um, within your library. But that's absolutely doable. Let's see, there's one in the chat earlier before we end the workshop. I'm currently using CK12 for my after school program. I'm in CK12, so I can begin working. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, like, I think we all put our email addresses in. Um, Shanna put her email address in. So when you want to bugger about those sheets that you guys want. Um, I can show <laughs> it to you on the last page if you want me to. Oh, okay. Let me, let me stop sharing then for a moment. Okay. Um, 
and uh, make sure that you guys have all, all of the information that you can need, but we all talk to each other. We're all responsive. So um, you just, you just need to reach out and we're going to, we're going to give you the support. And like I said, hopefully, hopefully we're starting to build that collaborative network. That's going to get this done and have the best resources in adult education. That's the goal. All for thank free. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, we've appreciated the opportunity of sharing with you CK12. It is a passion that we have that we want to not only see CK12 being used with our adults, but we want our adult teachers to have an easier time of creating materials for their classes and more success online. I think that the um, pandemic, if it taught us nothing else, taught us that online really does meet the needs of the adult students. They can't always come to a class because they work. And if we're online, we're going to need digital materials, and these are the best. So we hope you join us with this.